I will show you how well Scott Strossel did when he solved Gas Classic by Laser Time in his original video called Is This a Generally Approachable Sudoku? I'll include pause the video and what if moments to look at alternate solve paths. Click on the link below if you want to try the puzzle yourself. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, first he looks through the digits and he finally gets to the fours and notices that he can solve for a four up here in row four, column one, because of the four coming down column two and column up column three and across row five. He decides to hold off on writing. He just wants to study the diagram. Then he looks through the fives and sixes. doesn't see anything right away, so he's not doing any Snyder notation. But then he notices with the sevens, he can start solving right away. And first, you can see the seven here in row one and row three, and up here in column four. So there's only one place for seven in block two. And after that, you can kind of go around the grid and start solving more sevens. He finds a seven in row nine, column eight, and then row eight, column three, and then a row four, column two. These are all, you can find this all by cross hatching. And then he comes back in the middle and finds the last seven in row five, column five. And he starts looking at row four, noticing, hey, there's only four places left here. And he starts, then he decides, hey, I'm gonna start filling in some of these cans because this isn't that easy of a classic. I thought I could just kind of cross hatch my way through it, but he kind of kind of stuck right here. So he, um, Fills in a 3, 8 in row 4, column 5, a 1, 3, 5 in row 4, column 6, a 3, 8 in row 4, column 7, and then a 1, 8 in row 4, column 8. And then he notices down here, he's like, hey, there's a 2, 4, 6, 7 here, 2, 6, 7 here, and the 4 come across. The 2, 4, 6, and 7 are limited to these four spots in the puzzle. And so then he marks and goes, okay, they have to be, you know, the seven's right here. This has to be two, four, six, only two, four, and six. And so he marks the two, six there because of the four in row five, uh, the two, four, six, and then another two, four, six. And after doing the two, four, six, he finishes off block five. And this brings us up to our first what if moment. What if... Instead of focusing down here in block five, Scott would have focused up here in block two. I think uh, he would have made a little bit more progress in the puzzle, and I'll show you that right now. Okay, so I'm at the point where Scott had made all these solving, but he started focusing on block five. I think instead, if you looked, you might have seen, if you look up here, you can find a hidden single five up in block two, right? Because the fives in row one's in row three, this has to be a five. Now, if you come back down to block five, um, I think what Scott noticed about the two, four, six being restricted to these three spots is key and that you would need to mark that as a naked triple. So we'll put that in there, two, four, six, realizing that this has to be a one, three, five. There's a one right there. So the three, five, um, I think this was kind of like the intended solve path to be able to get that five at the beginning. Because once you do this, what you'll see is now there's a one here. These ones are a pointing pair. And so where can a one be up here? It can only be in this one spot. And so once you solve that for a one, you'll notice there's a two and an eight right here. This has to be a two, eight naked pair, which means you can solve this for a four, and then that will get you on your way. You'll get a lot further along a lot quicker in this puzzle. Also, fun fact, you may not know this, laser time is also the same person as Yoshi Baroshi. Cool, huh? All right. Let's get back to the main solve. Okay, after making these marks in block five, Strossel notices that these ones are a pointing pair and you have this one in column five. And so he marks ones in block two and he starts using the Snyder notation to go around the board. He marks some ones in block seven, uh, there in uh, row seven and columns one and two. And then he looks and notices that uh, in block four, these fives are actually a claiming pair. And so this five, since there can only be in uh, row four, only in block five, this uh, can't be a five. And so he removes that five from right there and keeps it a one, three now uh, by value cell. Then he starts looking at the threes and notices there's only two spots for three in block one. Now he looks at the fives and notices there's only two spots for five in block six. Uh, it's a long column nine there. 
and then it looks in block four and notice there's only two spots for a five in block four. And remember, it's not rotation. Anytime there's only two places remaining in a block, then you want to uh, make that. And I can tell you, Strokes, he was having a hard time with this puzzle. You know, a gas classic, the idea is it's supposed to be a pretty quick puzzle to move through. And again, I think if he had noticed uh, up here and solved that five, it would have been a lot quicker for him. And he probably would have made a lot more progress, but as it was, he didn't see it right away. And this puzzle is such where you're kind of moving around the grid. I didn't see, other than getting those sevens, I didn't see a, a nice, easy solve path for that. So after that, uh, he does find that five. So he notices, oh, there's a five in rows one and three, and I can solve for a five right there. And of course, since that's a five, this is a one. And then he starts looking down column four. And looking down column four, he notices that uh, row eight and row nine there, what's remaining is a four and an eight and a four and a six. But if you look back up here, you'll notice that the eight can only be in one spot. So he noticed that as well uh, because, well, there's only one eight right there. And the other way you can see this is that the eights are limited to these two spots. So that'd make a pointing pair as well. So the eight has to be right there. After marking that eight, he starts marking eights uh, in block nine. There's only two spots left for an eight in block nine. And then eights up in block three. Because what you see here is these eights are limited to row uh, column seven and eight in block nine. And they're limited to column seven and eight because of these two eights here in block six. So that makes these eights a claiming pair because they're, they're the only two that can be in column nine and they can only be in block three so that's a claiming pair of eight so he marks those and he finds some ones and he marks that there's only two spots for one up there in block three then finally uh this is a pretty good catch he finds a four up here in row one column six and so where the is the four uh, you can see that if you look in this spot right here, um, it's a naked single, right? One, two, three, no four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that has to be four. And he finds that naked single four. Okay. And he marks the two eight naked pair that's in block two and starts working his way down column five. So he has a two eight pair there. You notice row seven. Column five can only be a three and a five. And now what you have here, a three, five, naked pair. And so that means that this has to be a four, six. He doesn't uh, remove that two right away. Um, then he looks down and he marks, he says, okay, I got a four, six here. I got a one, two, seven, eight. I can put, you know, three, five, nine, triple across the way. But then he makes that and goes, oh, well, the five can only be in one spot. So he solves the five right away in row nine column two and then that creates some more five solving so now i feel at this point he starts to get back on track with with the solving and so there's only one place left for a five here in block four and then there's only one place for a five now in block six so he solves that in row six column nine and then he puts uh three five nine in row seven column six he comes back to here and says, okay, look for some limitations based on block eight, you know, and coming down column six. He puts this here, but instead he could have actually found a four. He could have found a naked, or yeah, a hidden single four by cross hatching. So he kind of got stuck here because he ends up doing a lot more marking of candidates. So Pause the video and see if you can spot the hidden single four while I give you a few seconds. Congratulations if you spot it. This would have helped you make so much more progress in this puzzle at this point versus writing in the cannons the way Scott did. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the four is right there. You see how there's a four in rows one and two and coming up column eight so there's only one place left for a four in block three and once you solve this four you can see you can solve that for an eight and that for a one and once you solve that uh, for a one you can solve this for an eight and this for three five one and so you make a lot more progress in this puzzle
let's go back to the main saw. Okay, we're back after this 359. Since Strussel didn't see that 4, he continues marking candidates. And so he marks a 3, 9 in row 8, column 6. And then he finds a 1, 2, 9 naked triple up there in block 4. You can see how there's just 3 candidates there. So he's trying to find restrictions and see where he can do some solving. Uh, then he look, goes across row 7, down to row 7, column 1, and puts a 1, 2, 9 there. Uh, and then a 2, 9 in row 8, column 1. And... Then in row 7, column 2, he puts a 1, 2, 3, 9. So you see he's a little off, and this is highly inefficient. When you're putting in four candidates in a cell uh, for it was supposed to be a gas puzzle, then you're probably doing too much marking. Um, cracking the cryptic, uh, you hear Simon talk, he, he doesn't like to put more than just a Snyder notation and then buy value cells. And, it, and then he'll just start looking at the grid and see what the grid itself will give him. But after the 1, 2, 3, 9, he looks in block six and he makes some marks for sixes and then he looks at row eight column seven um, kind of heads down towards block nine and puts a two three four nine after that a three four nine a row eight column nine and then finally he sees that four that we were talking about before so then he kind of comes up column nine and realizes oh this is actually uh, needs to be a four because the fours are in every other spot. So you can see it's like one simple, you know, hidden single can really unravel a gas puzzle pretty easily. After solving that four, it kind of starts helping him to solve some of these Snyder marks. So then you can mark the eight there. He can solve the one up there, row one, column eight, and then come down and solve for the eight in row four, column eight, because there's only two spots there. If I found one, it has to be an eight, and then solve. Uh, the three next to it um, and then going down remember these eights were kind of like a little x-wing so this now has to be an eight if you can solve that and then after that he goes up column seven and he starts marking cans again because he doesn't see another easy solve so he puts a two six nine up there in row one column seven a two six in row two column seven and a two nine in th row three column eight uh, after that point he looks and goes, oh, hey, I can solve a one. I see two ones now here in column seven, eight, only one place left for a one in block six. So he solves that for a one, um, which creates and opens up this three right here in row five, column six. So he solves that for a three, and then he's able to kind of solve this one, three, five, triple that's up here in the middle. So he solves the five, he solves the one. After that, Scott looks down and remembers this is a three, five pair. So he's able to solve the other part of that pair and saw that for a three, and then it goes down and says, oh, this is a three, this is a kind of a three, five, nine, yay, so now I can solve that nine, I can solve that five. After solving the five, he looks over across row eight and knows, oh, hey, now that's just a two, so he's able to solve that two, and then he switches across row eight, he's able to solve the rest of row eight, so he solves a three there, he solves the four there, and then he can solve uh, row nine, column nine, since it's a, now a Full house for nine. Uh, then looks and actually comes up and solves the two. And looks and wrote and says, okay, this is a two, so now I can solve for the nine right there. So he solves for the nine and he's able to solve for the six to finish this full house in column eight. Uh, then he fishes off block six by solving that for nine, which is our naked single, uh, cuts across and sees that, oh, hey, this is a one nine pair right here. So this has to be the only remaining digit. So that has to be a three, uh, which starts unlocking the threes up here. So he's able to solve that three, which he had marked previously with Snyder. And he puts a two eight in row uh, three, column three quickly, but then realizes, oh, where can an eight be in column three? This eight can't be here can be there, it can't be here, here, so this actually can be solved for an eight. So he marks that for a solve for an eight right away. Um, and after that, he finishes marking up block one. So he says, okay, there's only one six there in row two, column one, a one two in row two, column three, and a two nine in row one, column two, and then a six nine in row one, column one. Uh, at that point, he notices the twos in block two and they're a pointing pair 
And it comes down and affects and realizes this can't be two anymore. And it's at this point, with 18 cells remaining, that Scott Strossel cracks the puzzle. It's all naked and hidden singles from here. But let's go through it, shall we? And kind of see the order he did this. So first he starts with this four, and then he starts with a two. Uh, then he looks in row five, column four, and solves for it for six. And see how closely that you solve compared to what Scott does in the order he solves. Next one is a one in row six, column two, then a nine in row seven, column two, a one in row seven, column one, a nine in row six, column three, a two in row five, column three, uh, six in row two, column, excuse me, one in row two, column three, then a six in row two, column one, a nine in row one, column one, a two in row one, column two, eight row one, column five, a six row one, column seven, a two in row two, column seven, a two in row three, column five, a four in row nine, column four, and finishes out with a six in row nine, column five. Check out these other videos from my channel. Don't forget the Buy Me A Coffee link if you want to support the channel and give me some future uh, resources to help you out and provide you more value. Thank you, Scott Strossel, for letting me feature uh, this video. And go check out Scott's channel. Strossel is awesome. He's got a lot of different puzzles to include Sudoku. Thank you so much for watching.